podcasting from the Chicagoland area. This is Game On with Jackson Stewart, where we discuss men's lifestyle, focusing on sex, fitness, relationships, business, and more. We'll be interviewing the best of the best, the hot shots, and the rising stars in the worlds of modeling, fitness, cooking, and more. Influencers who are discussing keeping it sexy while at the top of their game. I'm your host, Jackson Stewart. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the game. What if you could be a better player for the cost of one more cup of coffee a month? Get access to a growing library of lit erotica, behind the scenes action, and player's guides with tips on drinking, cooking, fitness, dating, sex, and life after dark. Low tier rate while offer lasts. Patreon.com, game on with Jack. Keep it sexy and game on. This is Dr. Kojo Sarfo, and you're listening to Game On with Jackson Stewart. Hey, good people, sexy people. Welcome back to another episode of Game On with Jackson Stewart. I'm your host, Jackson Stewart, and today we are answering your questions on another episode of Ask Jack, but this is the After Dark edition. So it's all the uh, all those questions you're you're afraid to ask people when the lights are on couple things uh, up front. Definitely want to invite you all to check out Corey Nathan's political podcast, uh, Discussing Politics Without Killing Each Other. Very insightful, very informative, very thought-provoking. Big congrats to Ariana Gray's Jackpot Beauties on reaching 10,000 subscribers uh, last week. Big ups to her. Congratulations. And I need to make sure that I announce the newly launched Game On With Jack Digital Courses and Workshops. Uh, right now, there is a free enrollment on our first uh, mini course, which is the best guys night out. You know, numerous tips and tricks and ideas on how to ensure that you have, you know, the best night out with the fellas that you can possibly have. So www.gameonwithjack.shop, S-H-O-P, like workshop. Check it out. Enrollment's free. The course is free. There should be new content launching uh, soon, uh, so definitely get on board with that. There'll be discounts for, for uh, and coupons for people who sign up quickly, so jump on and uh, check it out and enjoy. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's get right into it. We got some uh, very interesting and thought-provoking questions right here. So first up, we got Sean. And Sean writes, uh, Jack, my girlfriend and I like shower sex, but we fall a lot. Any thoughts? Ooh, Sean, that's a good one. Um, that is a, uh, you know, it's always like romanticized in movies and, and, you know, it, it looks like, wow, man, like it's so hot and it's so cool. It, it's actually kind of difficult to pull off. <laughs> there is a lot of slipping. There's a lot of potential falling. Um, if you go to just about any, any like a uh, sex shop and I'm not endorsing any in particular, but like Lover's Lane or places like that, they have uh adhesive handles. I'm not he like suction cup handles that you can, you know, mount upon the shower and uh and use to to basically hold yourself up or, or get into a good position. Definitely be careful because that would be a very embarrassing phone call to nine one one and um and just be safe. But you know, I mean if that's uh if that's um you know, if that's your thing, or if water's your thing, maybe try, you know, a jacuzzi or a hot po- a hot tub or a pool or something else. But yeah, check that out. And uh good luck. Be safe with that. Let's see. U Q U U N N fourteen. U U Q fourteen. I'm assuming. Uh, writes in. Would you ever do an X-rated interview and with what guest? Uh, I'm assuming they mean. Like a guest uh that you know we've already had on the show. Uh ooh, that's good. That's a real good question. Oh, there are several. <laughs> I think some are obvious. Um you know, the guest that was um obviously you know blindingly attractive, but we had just a lot of fun in the pre show talk and the post show talk, Madison Fox. 
uh, was just a blast. And if I, if I was going to do an X-ray interview, I would totally do it with her because, I mean, I think she she's brilliant. She's got a very technical mind. She's you know has a technology background, and um, I just think that she could take take a conversation to a lot of interesting places. So. Uh, I'm gonna have to let her know this, and she'll probably. Be, and she's British, and she's got the accent and everything, and so I'm pretty sure that she would. Um, <laughs> she might say, "Jackson, why don't we do that?" And we'll kind of see what happens there. But yeah, I think definitely Madison Fox would be at the top of the list. I think I think it'd be a lot of fun, very interesting. Um, Anonymous writes in Jackson. I think my penis is too small. Should I have surgery? Anonymous, I don't know anything about you know that medical world. I'm not a medical expert but i would really recommend that you don't do that I mean, you can talk to your doctor obviously you know consult uh surgeons and physicians but i'm gonna say talk to a doctor first but i think you you know i think we men have been sold into the idea that you got to walk in with some eight or nine inch monster to please a woman and just what every woman I've ever spoken to has told me to the contrary that, you know, that that's fake, that, you know, a nine inch penis is there's it's it's like excess. There's it's too much to it and, and it's hurtful and all that kind of stuff. So talk to a doctor, but I would focus on, you know, if you're being told it's not enough, you know, focus on other skill sets that you can develop and and find look, there's somebody for everybody. Find somebody that appreciates your body for what it is. If you got serious hangups on it, um, get into some good therapy, you know, build up that self-love. Do all that before you start getting some odd procedure that, you know, is in some social media ad. You know, just be careful because the potential danger on that, I, I can only imagine. So uh, good luck with that. OM1264. I love these names. They sound like like Star Wars robots. <laughs> I'm trying to cut back on spending money on digital models, but I can't help. Oh, <laughs> oh, ain't we all been there? Um, oh, am I? You know, I'm assuming this is not like an addiction kind of thing, um, but just that you're enjoying yourself. Why don't you look at, you know. The, you might be uh you might be feeding a void or filling a void i'm sorry that's missing your life maybe it's social contact maybe it's it's a, a girlfriend wife whatever it is but why don't you look at what that void is and focus on that more so than spending money on digital models hey i've been there a lot of us have been there it's fun it can get pricey and it can become a habit so you know, now all my digital model friends are mad at me, but yeah, definitely look at what is this void you're, you're, uh, you're filling up. Maybe it's just the way for you to unwind after the end of a stressful day or something, but just look at it. Maybe you don't have to cut it out completely, but like you say, you want to cut back and, you know, let's look at some balance. <coughs> oh, let's see. Next question up. We have quit quick. <laughs> <laughs> when you guys hear the question, you're going to, you're going to find the, the username interesting. Uh, dear Jack, I come when I get a lap dance. What should I do? Sent in by quick nut 55. <laughs> I don't know if that's like an age or a birth year or like the amount of seconds. <laughs> I'm not laughing at you quick. I, I just come on. That's that's a very entertaining username given the the situation. Um, you know, not uncommon. Uh, it does happen. Uh, a couple things you can do to avoid that. Um, maybe wear a condom. Um, you know, if you know that that's that that's going to happen. Definitely, if it happens, apologize. That could be a you know if. You, Imagine the dancer situation. That could be dangerous. Like she doesn't know if this dancer, I'm sorry, she doesn't know if this customer that may have gotten bodily fluids on her, um, may have an STD, et cetera. So I mean, seriously, that it could be taken, you know, as a, as an offensive move, even though, you know, you didn't mean for it to be, uh, thicker underwear, 
you know, wear a condom, uh, maybe, you know, <laughs> masturbate before you go to the club, kind of, kind of defang that, uh, that dragon a bit. And, and, um, you know, maybe, maybe position the dancer in a certain way that they're not right in that, that zone that kind of sets you off, you know, maybe move it to your, to your thigh or, or your hip or something, but, you know, definitely take some precaution because like I said, that could be, you know, if I was a dancer and, and, and all of a sudden you bust a nut on me, I'd probably be pissed off. So definitely, you know, there are ways for you to, to kind of like, uh, to stop that from happening or, or mitigate that or, or lessen the probability while you still have a good time. So, and you know, and if you move a dancer, so you might say, Whoa, hold on a second, because yeah, I'm gonna bust a nut if you keep doing it. Like, but you can warn them and then you kind of see what happens. So good luck with that quick nut 55. Nick Ramos asks Jack, what cam room platform do I recommend? Well, Nick, I don't, you know, I don't officially endorse one or the other. I'm not affiliated or paid with either or paid by either, but, um, you know, uh, uh, Chatterbait and, and my free cams are the two I'm probably most familiar with. And, um, I mean, they're different. I mean, Chatterbait is, there's, there's what they call boy girl content, girl girl content. Um, it's a little bit more raw, a little bit more, X-rated, uh, MFC, my free cams use just one model of some special it's two models and you, you know, go visit and interact and, and tip and stuff. So, uh, it just kind of depends what you're looking for. If you're looking for more of a like single model, uh, contact and interaction, uh, you know, being more of a community kind of building scenario, MFC, if you're going in for something that's just kind of, that's going to be hot and, you know, more raw and more X-rated than, than Chatterbait. So kind of depends what you're looking for, Nick, and, and, uh, what your tastes are at that moment. Ox emailed, what should I look for in a cam model or a stripper? Uh, I mean, that, that's a tough question, Ox. I mean, it all depends on what your preference is. Some nights you might be all about blonde and blue eyes. And next night you might want a, you know, you might want a, a brown skin or, or dark brown skin, or, or you might be looking for an Asian model or in, it all depends what you move for. You might be looking for somebody who is very talkative. You might be looking for somebody who's silent and just, you know, moving on the screen. And so, and, and as for a shipper, what are you, what are you looking for? You know, if we get past, uh, looks, you might be looking for a stripper that's, you know, maybe tall or short or, or, or heavier or thicker or, you know, curvier or, or leaner or thinner or, um, or energy. You might want to, sh- might want to dance for a model who's like, you know, a little bit more dominant, a little bit more like in your face, a little bit more like, you know, you know, you want me or just, you know, or you might be looking for somebody who is more, you know, sensual or seductive. Whole point is look for a connection. Look for somebody that speaks to whatever it is that you're, you're looking for. And you'll know the click because you feel it because you're like, you'll feel it. And you're like, Oh shit, this woman could, <laughs> this woman could take everything I have if she wanted it. Yeah. That's, you want to look for the energy, look for that connection and, and you'll be okay. And I mean, I'm like a lot of guys, like I have multiple, for lack of a better word, multiple flavors I'm going to hang out with. Um, it could be, um, you know, it could be a model that looks like me or a mo- or not just like me because <laughs> you don't want to see that as a model. But it just, it, you know, it depends uh, on what I'm in the mood for, but it, they are all models or, or dancers that I click with in different ways. And, and we laugh and we have a good time. I think the, the key connection is that, you know, you both realize that this moment is transactional, right? Like, you know, they're hanging out with you or spending time with you or looking at you or, or typing to you because you're, you're tipping, you're paying and they know that you know that. 
And, and then once you get past that, then you can legitimately make each other laugh or you can legit, um, you know, develop a rapport and a care about the person that's not odd or, or, or creepy or dangerous, but just like, Hey, I come here. I'm going to spend money. I spend time with you on another level. We do enjoy each other's company. And once you get that, then that's the model or, or stripper that, that you want to hang out with. DigiRock uh, sends in, I have a friend who is an asshole at strip clubs, but always invites me. He always pays. We have a good time, but he's rude to the dancers sometimes. And he is also uh, terse and short with the staff. What should I do? DigiRock, stop hanging out with that motherfucker. <laughs> I'm sorry, man, but yeah, no, that's just it, none of that behavior is acceptable. If you guys are real close, you could, you know, take them off the side and say, look, bro, you, you can't, I like hanging out with you, but when we go to these places, you're a dick and you need to check that. If you feel he can take that into, you know, um, if he can take that criticism, go for it. If you feel like that's going to break your relationship, well, then that's up to you, but just stop going with him. And, you know, I knew a guy once who was, you know, he was an asshole to a, um, he thought he was being funny or cute, but he was really coming off just an asshole. And I stopped hanging out with him completely because I just, I couldn't do that. I don't care if you're the bus boy, the, the hostess, the owner, the manager, I'm going to treat you with respect. I don't care if you're dancing. I don't care if you're sliding up down the pole. I don't care if you're bringing me a drink. You work in the door. You are deserving of respect. Hands down, unequivocally, I can never say that word right, unequivocally, <laughs> uh, no questions asked, respect. Anybody that does not see people in that way and treats them differently, I got no time for. So um, I don't care if you, you buy everything I want that night and I don't have to touch my pocket once. It's not worth sitting there with you being a jackass, especially if you're being rude to somebody who's out there you know, with barely clothed, vulnerable as shit and trying to make money. And no, I'm not even rude to dancers that are rude to me. You know, I'm just saying, hey, we're not working or I'll sit through the rest of the dance, whatever. Or I'll just like, oh, I'll be back. I go bathroom and they leave me alone. No. Yeah. Did you right? Good luck with that. But hey, you know what? This might open some other perspectives you'll have on, on your buddy. He might be an asshole in more ways than just this. Anonymous sends in, uh, anonymous writes in, not, say, not sends, but sends in the question, do women really not care about dick size? Anonymous, um, the ones that I know and I have spoken to and I have polled and, and met and interviewed and et cetera, do not care about it. Um, some will say like, oh, like I, you know, you know, just like you've got some guys who are all about giant breasts or, or small breasts or big butts or whatever. Some women are about giant dicks, but some women, a lot of them are just like, no, I just like average. I like a guy who knows what he's doing. Um, I like a guy who, you know, wants to, to please me and wants me to please him and, and we click. So yeah, women really don't care about, it. I mean, there are obviously some that do, but the majority don't. They are sold much more about um, confidence and, and pleasure and, and connection and so on. XO Johnny asks, my partner wants me to stay to, I'm sorry, to say really rough stuff during sex. I'm not comfortable with it. What should I do? Ooh. Um, XO Johnny, you need to communicate this. Anytime there is something uh, in the bedroom or in sex that is not comfortable to a person, it must be communicated. And that goes, you know, not only just like, well, when we do this position, it hurts or, or anal hurts or whatever, or even like role playing that you're not comfortable with. Don't do it. Speak your piece. That's about respect. Cause if you don't, it's just going to go on and on and get worse. And to the point where you're going to either, it's going to like poison sex for you with this person and and then other parts of your relationship and you're just it's gonna go bad so just say hey look baby i'm not into this and um i'm not comfortable saying this stuff and and, and it you know and 
if they are really a partner, they'll say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you, and, and you guys will work it out. Next question, what is more important, Jackson, boobs or butts on a woman? Oh, well, a little bit of a, a little bit of biology or, or sociology. Um, and I've researched this, so I'm not just making this up. Uh, boobs and butts are attractive on a primal level to men because large breasts make a man feel on some level like this woman. Well, let me back up. The hips say this woman can provide me with children to contain my bloodline. And the boobs say, and she can feed the children and provide. That's literally what, why we're drawn to them. That having been said, um, both are important and neither are important. I've been drawn to women who have beautifully large breasts and a, 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 an amazing, as I call it, shelf booty. You could put a drink on that thing. <laughs> and I've been attracted to women that were, were small in both areas and, and on the thinner side. Um, I myself tend to like more curvaceous women, but I've been very attracted and had wildly interesting and amazing nights with women who were, you know, on the thinner side. And it all goes back to connectivity. It all goes back to like that, that moment when you click. I've known some hourglass beautiful women, but they had no personality. And it was like, well, this ain't going nowhere. And that was my call. It wasn't theirs. I have known women who were, you know, shit sticks, but they were sexy as hell, man. And we had some good times. So What's, which is more important? It's about preference. But what trumps both of those is, is personality, confidence in a woman. Um, I've seen skinny girls in, in black dresses that stop the whole room because the way they walk in with confidence and sex appeal, mm, you can't beat that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, <laughs> Ass Man 90. These usernames in these questions, guys. Uh, it sends in the question, Jack, I'm a dude with a small ass. <laughs> Are there any suggestions? Ask man, it's okay, man. You know, once again, just like the guy, uh, concerned about the size of his penis. Physicality is, see, men think women think like we do. Like we're all, we're about visual, right? And women like, like a guy's body. But in reality, guys, Body gets you so far, you gotta have personality, you gotta have confidence. I mean, go back to listen to any of the episodes. And every time I ask a question, what's the most, what's the sexiest thing about people? 90% of the people say confidence. And we're talking about some of the most beautiful women ever to be interviewed that I've had the amazing opportunity to talk to. And they all say confidence. So, but that having been said, small ass. So if you want your ass to pop, <laughs> um, and just, I know this from just having been, you know, a gym rat for so many years. Squats, uh, kettlebell swings, um, jumping squats, box jumps, anything that uses your legs, anything that uses your, your hips and your, uh, you know, your ass muscles is going to make that thing pop. Of course, I'm not a, a medical expert. I'm not a physiologist. So if you're going to go to a gym, Get a trainer, talk to somebody, and um, but definitely anything that works in that that area. So, like I said, squats, kettlebell swings, um, deadlifts, uh, box jumps, yeah, all those things will will pop the little booty a little bit. So, good luck, ass man. And last but not least, I love this question, <laughs> Jackson. What is your favorite curse word? <sighs> favorite curse word is fuck. <laughs> It really is. And I'm, and it's sad because cursing is, is, uh, not a sign of, of great intelligence or communication, but it is my favorite word and curse word. And unfortunately I've used it way too much, but I've used it as an adverb, an adjective, um, uh, a, a proper noun, <laughs> all in the same sentence. So yes, I, 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 I like fuck. There you go. Hey, thanks guys so much for just your great audience where I think we just hit like the 50th episode of season two. This is crazy. So thank you so much for listening. Uh, hit me up on YouTube, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, follow Game Out with Jack on Instagram. 
Definitely don't forget your free enrollment at www.gameonwithjack.shop. S-H-O-P. Keep it sexy and game on.